Welcome to Telerik Reporting, a course to help you get started with using the Telerik Reporting set of services and features in your own projects. My name is Alex Ziskind, and I've been training developers like you in web technologies for a few years now. And in this course, we'll take the approach that lets you experience working with Telerik Reporting from the point of view of a report designer, and also as an engineer that's integrating reporting solution into an existing application for a fictitious client, RPS. An issue tracking web application has already been developed. We'll be using ASP.NET Blazor for our example, and our job is to add a dynamic report page to the application. In this course, we'll design and build a report using Telerik Report Designer, which is a standalone application, and incorporate that report into an existing app using Report Viewer for Blazor, a component provided by Telerik Reporting. We'll also try different configuration options that are supported, including communication between the report services and the web app, as well as hosting the report APIs in our app itself. If you didn't understand any of that, don't worry, I'll be explaining everything in the intro chapters of this course. So what are we learning in this course? First, I'll give you an introduction to Telerik reporting and the tools you'll use to design and preview the reports. Then we'll go through the installation process together. There are several packages to install, so I'll show you a few of those in action. Next, we'll create some reports together and integrate them into an existing Blazor application. Once we have the basic knowledge down, we'll examine some advanced scenarios, such as globalization, parameters, exporting, passing custom user identity objects to the report, and configuring, rendering, and paging. Finally, we'll see how easily we can change the styling of the report components, how to build our own themes, and how to add styling to our apps with built-in features. You can follow along with this course by downloading the code base to help you get started. We'll look at the before and after states of the application so you have an idea of what the goal of each exercise is. And at the end of this course, you'll know how to navigate the reporting documentation, how to install the solution components, and how to incorporate reporting into your existing applications. Thanks for joining me. Now let's get started with the course. We have a lot of data to share and visualizations have become the common approach to sharing the data so it's more easily consumed and understood. Sure, tables are good, but some data is better represented as charts and graphs. Telerik reporting supports a wide array of visualization types, including graphs, dials, bar and pie charts, and yes, even tables. Telerik reporting has been created to offer a no-code or low-code solution to building data visualizations into our applications. Applications that we might already have in place in our organizations, applications that could already be using a number of web and desktop technology stacks. So whether you are using ASP.NET Core, Blazor, MVC, Angular, React, Vue, WPF, Telerik Reporting supports these frameworks and is capable of being plugged in. Telerik Reporting can retrieve and process data from relational databases, multidimensional ones, ORMs, or custom data layer-based data sources. The reports themselves can be viewed in various formats, including PDF, images, Microsoft Office Word, Excel, PowerPoint documents, and can be viewed with a dedicated viewer in a web or .NET desktop application. Telerik reporting can be deployed on both Windows and Linux platforms. And to ease the process further, Telerik has started deploying Docker files with example projects to kickstart the adoption of the product when targeting Linux or cloud environments. This initiative aims to streamline the deployment process and enhance the flexibility and scalability of our applications, ensuring a smoother transition and implementation experience across different platforms. In conclusion, Telerik Reporting is a reporting solution for all .NET, cloud, web, and desktop platforms that provides a full range of ready-to-use tools and services to help people in your organization to quickly and easily create, deploy, and use reports. Now, in order for you to be successful in this course, let's Let's take a look at some prerequisites next. This is a beginner level course for those that are getting introduced to Telerik reporting. Since there are two types of users who will interact with reporting, the prerequisites vary slightly between the groups. Here's what you need to know. The course is aimed at those developers who are already familiar with ASP.NET core concepts in order to follow along with the application integration portion of the course. You must also be familiar with Web API as we use this technology in the integration chapter as well. 
Now for analysts, familiarity with SQL will be valuable for building the queries necessary to create the data-driven reports and intimate knowledge of your business rule data model representation is of paramount importance as well. While in our demo scenario, the data set will be quite simple, real world scenarios will often be much more complex and might require the assistance of a DBA to really tease out the desired data to be displayed in the report. And whether you're a developer or analyst, you don't have to have any prior knowledge of Telerik reporting as I'll show you how to get started with the tools from the beginning. For developers, some familiarity with Blazor will make it easier to understand the Telerik reporting viewer for Blazor that we'll be integrating, but it's not strictly necessary to know Blazor since it's a technology built on top of ASP.NET Core. So if you know Core, you should already be good to go. That being said, if you do want to get familiar with Blazor and Telerik UI for Blazor, I do have another course here as well, which also has a getting started with Blazor section in it. You don't need any prior Telerik UI experience or knowledge either. The Telerik UI components that are used by the report viewers are implicitly included with them, so you don't need to configure the library components yourself. The sample project we'll be using already has Telerik UI for Blazor integrated into it, the solution. So if you're interested in browsing the code and setup, you have all the code as an example to look at. I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition in this course, which is a free tool available from Microsoft. Visual Studio Professional and Enterprise will work just as well. You will need to have a Telerik reporting license, which will grant you access to the Telerik repositories that we'll use in this course to get set up with the library. We'll also use Report Designer, which is a standalone tool to develop and design your reports. You may also wanna have Git set up and configured on your system so you can clone the demo repositories. However, the code is hosted on GitHub, which allows you to download a zip archive of the demo applications. So having Git is not a strict requirement. Let's go over some resources that you should have handy while working on this course. Now, it could get a little overwhelming looking at the documentation site because there are so many options, so I want to narrow it down a bit for you. When you click on the Docs and Support link in the main nav, it takes you to this page that gives you the ability to search. Use the search bar to quickly narrow down the topic you're interested in. The headings under the search are just shortcuts to the documentation. So whether you're installing or designing reports, you land on the same documentation site. You still have the ability to navigate the docs in the left navigation to find specific topics you need. There's also a demo site that you can get to by navigating the demos link in the main navigation. The demo site has pre-built live running examples of report integrations, capabilities, and design, and at a glance shows off the range of capabilities that this set of tools offers, as well as provide inspiration for some of your own visualizations. The demo site also has an example of a web-hosted report designer. We'll get into what that is and how to use it a bit later in the course. But for now, what you need to know is that there are different ways in which reports can be designed, and this demo page shows one of them, the web report designer. This course comes with its own sample applications that you can download or clone if you want to follow along. Let's have a look at the sample application that has all the Telerik UI components in place to get an idea of the finished product, and I'll show you where to get them in the next lesson. In this course, we're going to use a pre-built ASP.NET Blazor application that already has a report page that we're going to augment with our own report viewer. And we're going to host the report that we're going to create inside of that viewer. The end result is going to be a chart that looks like this after everything is styled and all the data is being pulled in. And you'll be able to export the chart, name the export file, and we're also going to work with page data as well in the tabular format to display this data in a pageable table. We're going to build up this report using the standalone report designer, and I'll take you through every step that we're going to need to get a report like this printing out. Now you will need to get the code base in order to be able to run this yourself in your own environment with Visual Studio. The code base is a Blazor application and it will run as a standalone application. However, in order to integrate reporting, we're going to need the database as well, which I'll go through in the next lesson. To get the application code, head over to this repository on GitHub. It's called RPS Tracker Blazor Reporting Start. And you can either clone this repository or you can click on code, which will allow you to download the zip file of the code. Once you've downloaded the code, you can open up the solution using Visual Studio. Now, sometimes when you clone a brand new project, Visual Studio is not going to know which is the startup project. 
we have a couple of projects here in this solution and rps.web is our web-based application. So that's the one we want to set as our startup project. So if that project is not highlighted in bold, you can right click on that and then click on set a startup project. This is the one we're going to be working with. Now you could try running it, but unless you already have a Telerik NuGet source set up, it will not work until we do that. And we're going to do that in the installation chapter. Now I know some of you might be anxious to get started, but hang on with me. We're gonna take this one step at a time so we don't miss anything. And if you know for sure you don't have Telerik NuGet installed, don't try running this just yet. Wait until the next chapter until we resolve those dependencies. And it's distributed as a DAC pack file. It's available for download right over here. You can find it at this URL and it's called rps.dacpack. This repository just has this one file. You can clone the repository or download the zip file. It's up to you. So if you look inside the folder, you'll have rps.dacpack locally now. Now, how do you use this file? Well, this is called a data tier application and you can use Visual Studio to help you out with getting this installed locally on SQL Server Express. Here I have Visual Studio open and this is the project that we've installed earlier. I'm going to go to view and then SQL Server Object Explorer. And here you'll see a list of SQL servers that are available for me right now. You might have one or more here. We have a local DB, as you can see, and I also have uh, the SQL Server Express instance running as well. Now you could use whatever instance of SQL Server you have. If you have a remote instance, that's fine too. If you have a Azure, that also works. We're just going to use Express here for this demonstration. And if you expand that node, you'll see databases. And I already have AdventureWorks listed in here. That's a sample database that Microsoft provides. I'm going to deploy my DAC pack file here. So if you right click on databases and then publish data tier application, you'll see that this is looking for that source data tier application or the DAC pack file. So all we need to do is browse and point it to the repository that we just downloaded and that DAC pack file, rps.dacpack. Let's open that and you can give the database a name, which will be RPS, and you can accept all other defaults and click publish. This will give you a little message that says this package contains one or more tables and that's fine. Click OK and this will go through and publish the database. Even though the database is pretty small, it still takes Visual Studio about a minute or so to publish it. You can see the progress down below. Once it's been published, you can click the little refresh icon and you'll need to expand the databases again. You'll see it in there. Now to make sure that all the data is right there, you can expand the RPS database, go to tables. You should see the four tables that look like this. Let's take a look at items. I'm gonna right click on the items table and then view data. And you should see our data listed. Now you're also going to need a connection string later, which we're going to come back to and use later in the course. This is just one way of getting the connection string. You can right click on the database itself, click on properties down here. And over here in the properties panel on the right side, if we scroll down just a bit, you will see the connection string. So this whole string right here is the connection string. You can even copy it and save it somewhere for later. All right, now that we have this database set up, we'll be back in another chapter to use the data.